to play the Budapesto in Solos for Young Cellists, Volume 1 by Carrie Cheney. And I, before I do that, I am going to show how to play a harmonic in fifth position with your ring finger. It's, I call it fifth position because if you actually play the harmonic and pressed it down with your third finger and you, you played other notes in that position, that would be fifth position, but um, this piece does not really have notes in fifth position, it, but it does have that D harmonic and the A harmonic. I think it's got both, maybe it just says the A. The piece before it, Clock Tower Bells, has both of them, and actually, in that first measure, uh, the first few measures, it keeps going from open D and G to those D, oh, D and G harmonics. Okay, so the thing about the harmonics in fifth position, or just the octave, playing the oct octave harmonics, um, which it's fine to do once you've been playing the cello, you know, six months or so, I guess, um, you, you have to just know that you've got your elbow probably about as high as it's ever going to be for the cello because after that you just go up like that so the way to test it is to just touch your ring finger to the D say and then rest your bow because you don't want the elbow to droop like that or you don't want your wrist to droop and the elbow to be high you want everything to be pretty straight el from elbow, wrist straight, and even the finger. It's pretty straight. Okay. okay, so the best thing to practice would be to play a note or a few notes there and then try to find the same note on the A string in first position. Okay, so we're playing D's, which have two very different timbres, and very different arm levels here. So you're going from this fifth position arm level to first position on the A string, which, where your elbow can be as low as, as it's ever going to be on the cello. So, try to practice like this, and test to see whether you got it in tune or not. Don't try to Say if you get it flat, don't try to slide into the pitch. That's a really b bad way to learn. Not just, as it, just that it's bad, but um, trying to always fix pitches never allows you to, to learn where that note is. Because you're, you, yeah. So you'll, you'll teach yourself much more quickly if you do this. And say, oh, sharp, try again. That's better. Oh, flat. Okay, don't slide in. Try again. There we go. So, so you just keep comparing. You can do it from G harmonic to D string G. Okay. So that's all it is. That's all you have to be able to do. Nothing scary about playing in fifth position. That's not what you need to do. Um, so clock tower bell starts like this. Okay, I'll play that little phrase a little slower so you can see how I go from first position to fifth slowly. Clock Tower Bells also has artificial harmonics, which can be a little tricky um, at first. You have to always remember to play just one finger touching, not like we usually do on the cello, say if we're playing you know, a scale. The other fingers don't pop up like on the piano. Okay, but for harmonics, they do have to pop up. And your bow closer to the bridge usually helps them. And they have to be really on target. So when you get to, what is it, measure 17, looks like an F sharp. 
but it's not an F sharp, or maybe it is an octave higher. note is an artificial, I mean it's the natural harmonic. We call these ones, when you divide the cello string in half, it's called either the octave harmonic or the natural harmonic. It's natural because it's the same exact pitch playing it as just touching it lightly. The artificial ones are different pitches when you actually play them. So it was an octave higher than F sharp. Okay, so now, Budapesto, the other challenge in this is you have a lot of backward extensions, which is why I really like this piece, because um, after I drilled uh, the backward extensions through B flat major scales and exercises in my students, then I let them do this, and it took me years to get students who could do backward extensions properly, because you have to keep practicing them for a long time. I used to wonder why students um, who I taught it to, you know, like a year later, two years later, they still weren't doing extensions well. So, um, you, what you need to do is say you're going to play on the A string, D, C natural, B flat, Okay, so you have to learn how to do these extensions without vibrato, which is a different technique than say you're going to play that backward extension of B flat with vibrato, in which case it wouldn't be an extension anymore. You would just, well, you'd extend to it, but then you would slide all the way back with your thumb to be able to play it in half position. So this would be not how you're going to learn. <laughs> and then sliding all the way back and vibrating. But we often have to play faster without vibrato. The faster we play, the, the least chance we can use vibrato, and it, you, you absolutely can't use vibrato if you're playing at a certain speed, because it'll just mess you up. So, say we want to do... Okay, so what do you notice? My elbow has got to swing forward because I'm playing on the side of the tip of my first finger and that feels really weird at first because we're just not used to that. All, we've used our first finger playing a little bit more like the other fingers, you know, the, more of the pad, the center of the finger. Although first finger never really plays on the center, it's more always a little bit on the side. But really, really, I tell my, I used to say, you know, make your finger like a cigarette, but then people thought that was a bad image for children, so I <laughs> tell them, make your finger like a pencil uh, to point and lean to get that B flat, or if you're on the D string, your E flat. So uh, let me play beginning of Budapesto really slowly. The first couple of measures are really good for strengthening your left hand fingers. So I like to use fingers three and four because they're the weakest ones. Uh, but if that bothers you, you can use two and three or one and two. So play this slowly and you can watch my elbow and see what happens when I do the extensions. sharp but that didn't really matter because I'm playing slowly. But it's gonna go a little faster. So. Isn't that amazing? So the elbow playing in a backward extension compared to the elbow playing in fifth position is like the two extremes. Okay so um I'm not sure if I've told you why it's so good to be able to play these harmonics. Um, if you hang out in first position for a year or two years, you know, and you never get going in other parts of the cello, you get, you get a fear of playing higher. Uh, plus, also, you need to be able to sit and play in a way where you can play in those higher positions or go from high to low. 
And if you're always here, you can mess around and change your position and you know still kind of do it all right in first position. So it's, it's good to be able to go back and forth. Um, also, bowing on a harmonic makes it tone production really easy. I mean, even though you don't get that kind of a beautiful tone, you get a different timbre, you know. It's just, it's just easy. The string responds really easily compared to a, a fingered note, a sunk in fingered note. Okay, what else about this piece? So, um, another good thing about this piece, you, you can practice uh, trying to, let me see if I can get that on the camera. I like to isolate, um, I like to touch here so we kind of isolate the movement of the wrist this way with these little notes. So when you do, um, so you, can, you, can, uh, you have to use small bows when you're going fast, so you, you want to use the smaller muscles. If you try to play it, you're going to get all tight in your arm. So you need to, to try practicing... Um, Maybe you can turn it into a natural minor. Okay, so maybe I'll just play this Budapesto piece for you. Let's see if I can get a different angle. Yeah, can't really see me. Let's see. Oh, this is, looks like it's way too long already. Well, you probably have shut the <laughs> shut your computer off by now. Anyhow, I will play it just in case you're interested. Not that I practiced it. Okay, so. Thank you. 